Hi everyone, you know what they say, time flies when you're having fun. And in this video, we're going to have a bit of fun making a fused glass clock using a technique that I've never used before. Welcome to Rocket Rose Art, my name is Jeff. Uh, the technique I'm going to use in this fused glass clock today was inspired by uh, Rosalind. It was a comment she made in response to a um, video on some uh, kiln carving that I did way back in August. But I just want to thank Rosalind for her comments. Um, this is why I like comments and questions because they get the uh, old brain going and get me thinking about new techniques and tests that I can perform. So if you've got any comments at all, please put them in the comment section below. Questions, negative comments, um, if there's something that I do that you don't like or I think I've done wrong, please put them in the comment section below. They'll get me thinking about what I'm actually doing. I think you're going to find this clock interesting and hopefully get a bit of fun out of it. So let's get into making it. Oh, and don't forget, if you like the video, please hit that like button and uh, think about subscribing. I'd appreciate that. Now the comment from Rosalind was about using frit underneath clear glass, putting the frit straight down onto fibre paper and then the glass on that and then fusing it. My concern was <clears throat> whether the um, fibre paper or whatever you use got mixed up with the frit. Um, she said no, she's been successful at doing this so that had me thinking. So I've done a couple of tests doing just that. This one is with uh, fine powder, this one with coarse. Now I've used some red here, I've used a little bit of Egyptian blue, a little bit of spring green. Now Egyptian blue and red react and we did get some reaction here. Um, but on this side, what, it, why, what it's actually done is just um, darken the red, it hasn't turned it um, completely dark. So that was a nice reaction, I like the um, the boundary and everything that it caused and I even like the reaction that come from the spring green. That worked out well. The finish on the back is as you would expect from a clear glass so that one's worked out well. Now this one is where I used coarse frit. I just laid some coarse frit down onto the thin fire paper, clear glass over the top and fused it together and it's turned out quite nice actually. Probably, yeah, you might be able to see it. You get that little bit of a pillowing effect from the really coarse frit under there. The finer um, frit has left this really interesting texture on it. And when I first seen that texture, it sort of reminded me a bit of like a leathery texture. So my thoughts were, what if you use some brown there? You might get a nice leathery texture there. But anyway, they have both worked out and that's the inspiration behind this clock. Now I've got a decal here for the um, hours and the markings. Had that for a while. It's not very big as you can see by my hand. Um, but that's going to be, that's how I'm going to get the numbers on it. And the shape of it has been inspired by how they actually cut this decal out when I purchased it. I didn't cut it out like that, so the clock is going to be an octagonal shape. Now the glass frit I'm going to use is um, 0120 yellow, this is all opal, 0145 jade green, 0124 red and 0164 Egyptian blue and then just some coarse plain white or opaque white. Now just um, let you know that all the glass I'm using is Bullseye COE 90 and I'll be fusing, as I said before, I'll be fusing this down onto um, thin fire paper. There's no slumping today and by the way this is just 3 mil. There won't be two sheets today, it'll be just a single sheet of 3 mil clear. As far as equipment is concerned you will need some way of drilling the hole for the uh, clock mechanism here and these are the hands I'm going to use by the way that is black so the first thing I need to do is to cut my uh, piece of clear glass 
The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to first cut it into a square and then I'm going to cut off the corners to end up with an octagonal shape. I didn't mention size before, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece that's 183 across that way, obviously that way. Then I'll work out uh, at what distance to cut these corners to get my nice octagonal shape. I've chosen 183, it's going to be a bit longer, but it's more dictated by the actual um, hands that I'm going to use. So I've got my guide set to uh, 183 here. Thing is, we'll cut that this out of the way a bit. So there's our square of one eighty three. Now I'm just going to go and work out. Um, exactly how to cut these corners off. I haven't done that yet, so there you go, doing it on the fly. So that wasn't so bad. Basically, I just found the center here and then measured out that way. So 183 across that way, that way, and found my corners. And I've just checked that my um, decal is going to fit in there nicely. My paper is just to make this stand out for you. So I'll just cut them all off now. So you can see now that I've um, set my guide here to 45 degrees and um, it's just a matter now of cut off these um, corners. Once I get it all in the right spot. So the next thing is to uh, attach the decal to the glass and I want to do that before I put this on a bed of uh, fine frit. I'm sure you can imagine if I didn't do that what's going to happen to all the fine frit. So this is my setup for um, attaching the decal. Got some water on this side, ruler to centre everything, cloth and a little spatula. So I think that's nice and centered. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that overnight to dry and then tomorrow we'll put it on our bed of fruit. So it's been overnight. The um, decal is dried. Stop waving it around so you can see. <laughs> um, and now I'm just going to uh, make up our bed on this little piece of thin fire paper. I've drawn it out, uh, the shape here found my setter so I can uh, sort of do, I'm going to do red in there as I said and then do some yellow around there and some of it's just going to um, yeah happen as it happens type of thing so um, we'll just get into that by the way I won't be talking because I will be wearing a mask
Okay, um, I've changed the position of the camera just so that I can get rid of a bit of that glare. It's all done. Um, sort of changed my mind a little bit halfway through or partway through. I've uh, made it as tidy as I can around the edges. Have a little bit of concern about the fact that I've got some white in the middle there, which is going to hold up the center of it. And I'm a little bit concerned that I'm going to get some bubbles around the center there. But hey, I've never done this before, so um, it's an adventure. Anyway, I'll get that in the kiln and we'll do our fuse and we'll find out tomorrow morning. Well, there are a few lessons that I need to learn in that, given that it's the first time, it's okay. First lesson, the uh, frit has to be thicker. I um, don't know whether you can see that, there's some holes there. It's just too thin. So if I do that, you'll get an idea what's happening. It's just too thin there, and um, so we've got gaps in it. So that's lesson number one. Lesson number two, there are bubbles. See that bubble there? And there's one around that there. They're not bad, it's, they're only small. Um, and if this was nice and um, opaque, clear, uh, solid around here, I, I would like it a lot better. And the third lesson, the decal has faded. Now what happened there is as I was uh, firing it and, look, and keeping an eye on it, this, um, start again, this edge here has worked out well, but as I was firing it and uh, just watching and see what it was doing, I noticed that this hadn't fused properly at the temperature that I run it at and it needed to go higher and that's when I started to worry about the decal because I didn't know what temperature that decal should be fired at because I've had it so long <laughs> I'd forgotten. So it was, the third lesson is that uh, probably fire the piece first then put the decal on. Doing it with one firing that's going to be fine on maybe a really simple piece where you don't have to take it too high but for this piece where I had to take it high enough to get this all to round over um, that decal wasn't going to uh, work properly. Now, you might be able to find a better decal if you want to try something like this that'll uh, go to a, a higher temperature. But in this case, um, it uh, wasn't quite right. Anyway, what I've got to do now is drill a hole in there without breaking the whole thing and put the movement on. That's the movement. You can probably see that you will slightly see it behind there. But up against the wall, I don't think it'll be a problem. So let's get that hole drilled. Uh, one more lesson, um, the design. I don't particularly like it. Um, I think it's just a bit odd. And um, I'm sure a lot of you will agree with me. There's no balance in it. Um, I didn't expect to get this to go quite as dark. I should have, I really should have um, um, expected that, but I didn't. A bit more red, a bit less dark color. And at least maybe I should have put some, um, uh, what is it, Egyptian blue around here so that we got some reaction to give it that dark frame. So I don't particularly like the way that's worked out, but hey, it's, it's somebody will love it. Now you may not have seen my other video where I did some drilling idea is, is I've just got a container here with water. I've got a um, piece of glass underneath, sacrificial piece of glass, so that that'll hopefully stop the chipping as I go through. And um, I've marked my centre that uh, just enough water to cover it. And that's my drill, just a little um, hand drill. That's the actual bit that I'll be using. So when I cut this, I'm going to start at an angle and then slowly lift that up 
this drill is um, I can vary the speed of it so I'll start very slowly and then slowly lift the drill up and then complete it now I won't talk while I'm doing it because of the noise so um, I just got a couple other things to do and then I'll come back right let's do this uh, keep your fingers crossed Okay, our hole is all done and it's worked out well. Minimal chipping on the back. You can see there's a small chip there, but uh, that's going to be hidden. Anyway, we'll get the mechanism in and she'll be done. So I've got the mechanism here. I've got the hanger, a little um, rubber washer. It goes in first. Then we put a brass washer on the top of that and then our nut. Just got to get it on, fiddly fingers. Sorry, I had to uh, go off camera to finish that. My shakers just made it impossible. So anyway, it's on now. And then we put the hour hand on. on our minute hand and we have a little nut sorry for you having to watch this this is painful And then our second hand. Oops. All done. So, I don't know what you think. I think it's ugly, but <laughs> beauty is in the eye of the beholder, I suppose. But anyway, there it taught me a lot of lessons and I do love the idea of being able to just put the frit straight down on the um, thin fire paper. It just needs to be thick enough. And I think if it was thicker and I put the uh, coarse frit in the powder, we wouldn't get those bubbles. Anyway, another day we'll try again. Go on, you can say it, it's ugly. I know it's ugly. Um, colours are just too garish for me. Might be going on my wall, um, but it will go in the gallery. Because um, the funny thing is, is that we all have different tastes. So somebody will like it at some point. Um, sorry for uh, the painful fiddling that I had to do to uh, get the mechanism together just the way it is for me now anyway if you uh, like that please hit the like button put all your comments in the comment section below definitely tell me what you think of the design um, I got a fair idea I know what I'm gonna hear but anyway tell me anyway um, and until the next video I'll say bye for now